Hi, it's Mr. Adams from Midwood High School. This is a video on GFM calculation. Now we're in the topic of stoichiometry, and GFM simply stands for gram formula mass, or the mass of the formula in grams. And as we discussed before, um, the unit of gram formula mass is grams per mole. Now the mole is pretty um, important in the topic of stoichiometry and has a bunch of um, different equivalent uh, values. Now it's exactly okay 12 grams of carbon 12 in terms of the number of particles and that number of particles is something called Avogadro's number okay um, we said it's 6.02 we didn't go this far in terms of the significant figures but what you should do you should google this number and see actually how large it is okay so it's 12 grams of carbon particles and 12 grams of carbon 12 which is Avogadro's number is also equivalent to 22.4 liters of gas at standard temperature and pressure so the mole is equal to the GFM of any substance it's equal to 12 grams of carbon 12 which is Avogadro's number and also 22.4 liters but today we'll focus on the grams per mole aspect of it Okay, um, when we're doing gram formula mass calculations, we want to be um, careful in terms of how we list the masses. You always, always need your reference table unless you have all the masses uh, memorized. Okay, and for our purposes, we will round the uh, masses to one decimal place. Now, very key also, you can have the masses and everything else, but you have to list your data carefully because if you put a number in the wrong column, you know what happens there. Now what you can do, you can pause the video, right, and do these guys right here, these first two here, um, these two right here, and just try this guy over here. Okay, our first guy is CH4. Now CH4 is methane, right, um, which is a main ingredient of natural gas. Now what you simply do, you put carbon down, okay, we have one of them, and you times it by the mass of the carbon. So the mass of the carbon in our reference tables is, will be, to one decimal place, will be 12.0. All right? And we have hydrogens. And the small subscript there, 4, tells us we have four hydrogens. We look on our reference table. Okay, hydrogen has a mass of 1.0. We probably have that memorized by now. Okay, so it, simply we have 12.0 plus 1 plus four, okay, of them, four times one is four, so we get 16 right here, 16.0, and the unit is grams per mole, so what we just did, we calculated the GFM of methane CH4, and you're done. Now the next guy will be barium peroxide, I chose peroxide because they, you have to be careful with them, so you look on table E, right, and once you look on table E, you'll see the peroxide ion is this guy right here, O2 to the minus 2, alright, and we know barium from experience is BA, okay, and the charge on barium is plus 2. So what's going to happen, um, barium is a metal, and this guy right here is non-metal, right? So what's going to happen, we will have an ion compound, we will do the crisscross. Now remember, this is this guy right here is a polyatomic ion, so we have to be careful in terms of the polyatomic ion. We don't change anything with the subscript. So what's going to happen, the two for the barium, okay, we'll go over here, and the, this two right here, for the peroxide, we'll come over here. All right, so we'll do the switch. So what's going to happen? We'll get B A, okay, two coming over. We'll get B A two. Now we need a parenthesis, right? Okay, O two, parenthesis two. Now what happened? This two right here came over and went on the outside. So this two right here is this two on the outside over here. Now, once again, right, this two for the um, peroxide is this two inside of parentheses. We will not change anything about it. We can reduce this two right here and this two on the outside right here. No problem, right? So our final formula would be BaO2 for barium peroxide. All right, and we now find the um, 
GFM. Now remember, you can be given the actual formula or you can be given a name. Now we did naming and writing forms already, so you should, shouldn't be having a panic with that. So barium is BA, all right, and we only have one of them. So that's one times, let me see on the reference table, 137.3. Okay, 137.3 and oxygens. Okay, we have two of them, and that's two times 16, 16.0. Okay, so that's going to be 137.3 plus 32.0. Okay, and you add those guys up, and when you add them up, okay, you get 169.3. Three as grams per mole in the units as your GFM. So once again, be careful with peroxides when you're doing the crisscross. Um, you don't want to reduce the subscript of the coefficient. Okay, we have calcium phosphate right here. Um, so no, this formula is given to you, so it should be simple. Calcium. Okay, you notice that you have three of them, right? And the mass of calcium is to one decimal place forty point one. All right. Um, phosphorus is in the parentheses. Remember, this two distributes to everything inside the parentheses, so we have two phosphorus atoms. Right. Okay. So phosphorus on the reference table is going to be approximately thirty. Right. Thirty point zero rounded. And oxygens, we have two times four, eight of them. So eight times 16.0. So we're going to do the math for each of those guys. So three times 40.1, okay, is going to be 120.3. All right, so one twenty point three two times thirty is going to be sixty and eight times sixteen is say eight six is forty eight eight one eight one twenty eight right okay good one twenty eight let me add those guys up so this point three goes there eight goes there Let's see 10 goes there, and 3 goes there. So that should be 308.3 grams per mole for your um, calcium phosphate. Sodium peroxide, another peroxide. All right. So we know sodium is Na, right? So it charges plus 1. So what's going to happen? You will do the crisscross. This 2 will come over here. This 1 will go over there. Now remember... For the rule for polyatomic ions, we don't need a parenthesis if the number coming down is 1. Okay, 2 or higher, we put parentheses. So simply, the formula is going to be Na2O2. Now, the temptation might be to reduce, right? But do not reduce these 2s. Why is it? Because this particular 2 over here, right? This 2 right here belongs to what? Belongs to the <clears throat> polyatomic ion, so you cannot reduce it, all right? So the formula for sodium peroxide is actually Na2O2, so very, be very careful, all right? So we have Na, we have two of them, and on the reference table, Na is approximately 23.0 to one decimal place. We have oxygens, we have two of them, and they're both going to be 16. So that's going to be what? 46 and 32. Okay, and you add those guys up. So you'll get 8 and 7. So it's 78.0 grams per mole. And a simple way to recognize <clears throat> peroxides is simply you have something in group 1 or in group 2, it has O2 next to it. Okay, and you're done. All right, the last guy over here, um, we'll tackle later on in class, right? This is called a special compound. It's called a hydrate. You have an ionic compound part, and you have a number of waters attached to it. You'll see a funny dot in the middle, right? That dot doesn't mean multiply everything. It's simply separating the ionic compound part from the water part. So what you simply do, you just write your Mg down, you write your S down, you write your O's down, okay? Now, Mg, 
is going to be 1 times the mass of mg, which is going to be 24.3. Um, S is going to be 1 times 32. Okay, am I correct with that? 1 S is 32.1. Okay. Oxygen. Okay, for the, this part right here, we have four of them times 16.0. <clears throat> now notice, <clears throat> I didn't put the oxygen, all the oxygens together. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a bit of a shortcut. I'm going to calculate the mass of the seven waters by themselves. And later on when we'll we're in class, I'll, I'll tell you why we did that. All right. So we know that water, right, H2O, oxygen is, is going to be 16, right? And we know we have two hydrogens, so that's two times one, that will be two. So it was going to be seven times 18. All right. So we'll add those guys up. So you have 24.3, you have 32.1, you have 64. Okay, I can write 64. 64.0, and you have 7 times 18, which is 126. All right? Okay. Now you add those guys up. And you should get something around 246, okay, 0.4 grams per mole. Now, once again, the reason why I separate this water out, I'll tell you later on in class, it'll be beneficial for us then. But once again, um, the mass still will be the same in terms of GFM, and it, and it works. All right, so this is a, for something called a hydrate, all right? So we'll talk about it later. Okay, folks, um, I hope this video was a help. You can be given formulas, you can be given names, either or, not a problem. You're simply adding up the masses. We'll use one decimal place and you'll get your final answer. Um, you can you now use GFM to do a number of things further on in stoichiometry, but GFM is very, very important. And uh, as always, hard work to sacrifice equals success. Take care.